So, you're scared of the dusty end of the fretboard. So slow down, everyone slow down. I've got to warn you guys now that if you choose to use this exercise in your practice, you're gonna be causing stand faces everywhere. So let's look at this exercise today. Stop being scared of the dusty end of the neck because that's where the saucy notes live that get the crowd and audience and other musicians whooping. Stop feeling trapped in the same position on your neck and playing the same thing again and again and again. Finally, avoid embarrassment because people hide their faces. This has happened to me personally. You want to avoid this at all costs. Embarrassment when people hide their faces because you've attempted a lick and you flopped miserably at it and lost all your groove in the process. Now this is what we want to avoid. So here is an exercise done by a bass player that you should all check out called Yannick Was Done. Okay, so this exercise is really going to get you familiar with the fretboard and linking up the fretboard together. Often it seems that the lower part of our neck and the higher part are two separate things. So this exercise is really going to put it together. The exercise is going from a major chord, a major arpeggio. transition into a diminished chord. And then we end up back at our one, back at our major. So how we're gonna play this is gonna hit our root note on our fourth string. This is an exercise that can be done on a four string bass, five string bass, but we'll work at it like it's a four string bass. So I'm going to start on G, third fret on your fourth string, hit the major third, second fret, the perfect fifth, which is fifth fret, and then the octave. And then we get third, fifth, and all the way up to the octave on the G. So this position shift is gonna be where a lot of the magic is earned as we take this exercise and move it about. And then we go back down to the fifth. Now we went to the diminished chord, so we just go up one fret to our 13th fret, down to our 10th fret. And the diminished shape is really good on bass because it's symmetrical. So 13, 10, 12. 9, 11, 8, then 5, and 3, because we're shifting positions as we go. And you're back to your root note. exercises like this you really should buy Yannick Guistala's book all the good stuff this is one of the exercises from it so I'm not sponsored to do any of this but it's a book you should definitely look into now the power of this exercise is then when we start changing key go up a semitone each time This exercise will come in when you actually work this up with a metronome, build up speed and start moving around all the different keys and go up as high as you can whilst going up the keys and going back down because it's linking up the areas between the fretboard and also getting in some nice changes between your one chord and your seven diminished and then when you begin to add other stuff it's just getting you familiar with the spaces so that when you learn other licks, you can begin to recognize where the different intervals are. You can go, okay, I know the root notes here. I also know the root notes here. Also now I've got a diminished chord right underneath it. 
these shapes, these patterns, they all become familiar. So quick lesson today, guys, take it, take the, take the transcription. If you want PDFs, there will be PDFs available from my website very soon. So stay posted in the description and comments below for that. And as always guys, subscribe for more tutorials, tips on bass playing and furthering yourself as a musician. Stay bass killer.